Hi, this is Simon Obstel and welcome to the third part of this tutorial in which we're looking at creating this Eye of Sauron effect. So this time we're going to be doing the fun stuff which is creating lightning, both the lightning that surrounds the eye and some lightning in the sky behind it. So first of all, let's set up our project. I'm going to have a width of 540 and a height of 1920. And let's have a duration of 30 seconds and 24 frames a second is fine from the frame rate. So in this group, as usual, we are going to add generators clouds. So let's set up that clouds generator. I'm going to make it 1920 by 1920. I will set the horizontal scale to eight. And I'm just going to open up the gradient editor and I want to throw away that black tab there. Click on the top here and drag this one around here and set that opacity to black. So we're setting an opacity gradient there on the top and we're having a white fill. Next what I want to do is I want to come to filters and distortion and I want to use a filter called stripes. So I'm just going to set the mix value of this down to 50% and then I'm going to add a randomized behavior to that angle there. So add parameter behavior randomize and we'll set the amount to 5%, the apply mode to multiply and let's have a noisiness of one. And this is giving us more streaky kind of effect. So then I want to work on this master group here and I'm going to set it to fixed resolution. I'm going to set the width to 540 and the height to 1920. I also just want to remember to come back to my clouds and what I want to do is open up the scale and set the X scale to 1.5. So we've got this long, thin streak. So let's come back to the group here and let's apply some filters to it. So first of all, I'm going to apply underwater. Then I'm going to select stylize bad TV. And finally, I'm going to select bulge. So let's turn off everything except underwater just for the time being. The underwater, we want a size of one a speed of two and a refraction of 30. So now let's work on the bad TV. Let's turn that on. Let's have a waviness of 40. Let's set the roll to zero, the static all the way up to one, the color sync down to zero, saturate down to zero, all these other values down to zero. Because we're literally just interested in that nice breakup that we get with this filter. So let's have a look at our bulge here. I'm going to set the amount to 960. And then I want to come to the X center and I want to add a randomize to the X center. And what I'm going to do is set the amount to 0.5, the mode to add and subtract, and the rest is fine. So what this is doing is it's bending the middle of our lightning. So we're getting that really, if I turn that on and off, you, you see that's, that's giving us that sort of kind of lightning look, which is, which is really quite good, I think. And there's one other thing we want to do to this clouds layer. So just above that stripes filter, we want to come to filters, glow, and we want to select dazzle. And let's set that amount to 60. So obviously this doesn't stand up to being looked at too closely for too long. But in the context of our scene, I think it's actually going to work really rather well. And there's just one final thing we need to do before we render it out, and that's to mask off the lower half so it feathers away, so it'll feather off into the center of the eye. So what I'm going to do is select the rectangle mask, draw a mask like that down at the bottom there. I need to invert it. Let's have a feather of something like 750. And let's just adjust that position until we're getting the fade off just happening right at the bottom there. 
turn on the overlays, we can see exactly where that's happening. That should do us. So now we can't see this bottom end and that's going to be better. Okay, so then we can render it out. So we come to the share menu, export movie. Remember to choose ProRes 444 and let's render it out as lightning. So back in our master comp, I just wanted to do a little bit of housekeeping before we start compositing the lightning. So I'm going to close up that eye group and I'm going to make it 3D. And then I'm going to bring in a camera. Now, the reason I made that group 3D before bringing in the camera is that I didn't want all the other groups to become 3D. Otherwise, all that careful masking that we'd done would have come undone. So I just wanted that enclosing group. So anyway, come back to the camera and let's set its Z position to 500, just to pull us out a little bit. So next I want us to introduce the horns or whatever it is that is supporting the eye on top of the castle. So I'm going to make a new group and I'm going to import this image called horns and I'll put a link to that in the comments. So come to its properties, let's set its scale to 110 and then let's bring it down on Y, something like negative 400. Right, then I want us to add a light so it looks as though this is being lit up by the eye. So I'm going to add object light. The first thing I want to do is I want to make sure the eye is not being lit because I want it to be effectively self-illuminating. So I'm going to come down to its lighting there and just turn that off. You see the difference that that makes quite a lot. Okay, so I'm going to come back to the light. I'm just going to pick say that colour there, so we've got the, we're in the same ballpark. I'm going to change the light itself to a spot. I'm going to set the intensity up to 3000. I just want to move it back on Z so it's actually illuminating our scene, like so. Come back here, let's have a fall off of 5, and let's adjust the cone angle to 36 and the soft edge to 18. That's already looking better and what I want to do is I want to add a flicker to the intensity so let's add parameter behavior wriggle. Let's have an amount of a thousand. Let's set the noisiness to 0.75 and that gives us that which is Good enough for now. Okay, so now we can address the lightning. I'm going to make a new group at the top here, object new group, and I'm going to import my lightning render. So I'll come over to its properties and down to its anchor point and its Y anchor point I want to set to negative 1920. So it's at the bottom of the element. And then I'm going to set the scale to 25%. So there's our lightning and then we can just rotate it and it's looking pretty good. So I'm going to set its blend mode to linear dodge and that just gives us a slightly better overlap with the, with the foreground there. Now the thing about lightning is that we don't want it on all the time, we want it to flicker. So what we're going to do is we're going to come to its opacity and we're going to add a randomize, sorry, off the bottom of the screen there, you'll have to believe me, randomize. So let's set the amount to 300 and the apply mode to subtract. And what this is going to do is make it, make it off far more often than it's pretty much twice as long as it's on for. So let's have a look at how that works. You can see we're just getting these nice lightning-like blips so all we need to do now is to duplicate it and adjust its rotation. So let's have another one down here. And each time we need to just adjust its timing by dragging on the mini timeline like that. And we might as well also randomize the flicker behavior there by clicking on the random seed. So now we've got two of those. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to just speed through and make six all together. So duplicating that, just going to turn on the overlay so, so we can see what the rotation is, have one 
more or less in the center like that. Again, drag on the mini timeline, click on the seed, and we'll do this three more times. So having made six of those, we've now got this effect, and that's, that's looking pretty good, really. But in addition to these streams of lightning, which appear to attach the eye to the structure, I also want to have some lightning within the eye itself. So I'm going to make a new group, and I'm going to import my lightning into that. And then I'm going to make a clone of it. So right-click, make clone layer. And then let's turn off the original. The clone, I'm going to adjust its scale as follows. So I want 25% on X and 15% on Y. So I'm going to do that same trick of randomizing the opacity using a randomize behavior. Set that up as before, 300%, and subtract for the mode. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to use this clone to make a replicator. So I'm going to come to Object, Replicate. So the replicator shape wants to be a circle. Let's have a radius of 360. Let's set the arrangement to outline, and then let's have 12 points. I'm going to come down and turn on Align Angle. I'm going to set the angle to negative 60. Let's have an angle randomness of 100. And because that source is an animation, we want to turn on random start frames. So now we have a look at how that works. So we've got this random lightning within the eye itself. So that's just a little bit too intense. So what I'm going to come do is come to the group. I'm going to set its blend mode to screen, and I'm going to reduce its opacity down to 30%. And I think this is going to work a little bit better. There we go. So I've renamed these two groups, Edge Lightning, which is our radiating lightning, and Core Lightning, which is the lightning in the, in the middle of the eye. And I think it's probably worth just adding filters, glow, glow, reduce the opacity down to one. And then let's copy that onto the other group as well. Just helps to bed it in a little bit more, I think, probably. Okay, so now what we want to do is we want to look at the background and the, in particular, the lightning effect on the clouds there. So I'm going to close up all these groups and I'm going to make a new group at the top here and I'll allow it to be 3D and I'm going to import my ominous sky. And then I'm going to move this group to the back. Now I don't want this to have the lighting, so I'm going to turn that off. So obviously what we want this sky to be a long way in the background. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to push it back to negative 15,000 on Z. And I'll just scale it up to 5,000. And where's it gone? Well, the answer to that is that the camera by default has a limited range. So we need to come in and adjust the far plane here. So I'm going to go for something crazy like 75,000. And then that'll bring our background back in like so. So we can scale it down. We didn't really need 5,000. Something like that, that'll do. So around uh, 300, I think there. So let's just turn off these foreground elements so we can concentrate on the, the sky itself. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to duplicate it. So right click duplicate. Then I'm going to come to filters, color, and I'm going to look for threshold. So what this will do is allow me to just pick up the brighter areas of the sky. So let's reduce that threshold down to 0.2 and the smoothness to 0.36. So now we're just getting the, the brighter parts of the clouds. Let's just adjust that threshold a little bit more, just refine it, maybe go for yeah, 0.22, I think. Now we don't want this brighter area here to be illuminated by the lightning. So what I'm going to do is come down and select the Bezier mask here and just draw out the area that we do want to be affected by this, like so. Then what we're going to do is we're going to set this blend mode to screen. And now if I toggle that on and off, you can see how this is going to work. 
So we're going to do two things to animate it. The first of which is to animate the opacity with a randomized behavior. So add randomized to this again off the bottom of the screen, but you'll be able to find it. So the amount is going to be 400%. And again, we're going to be using that technique of using subtract to push it down below zero for a majority of the time. I'm just going to reduce that noisiness down to 0.4. So if we now play it, you can see the lightning flashing in the background. But it's a little bit obvious that we're just doing this to the whole sky. So what I want to do is I want to do it selectively to different bits at different times. And to do that, I'm going to add an extra image mask to this layer here. So come down and add a rectangular mask, and I'm going to draw it down like that. So it goes from top to bottom, open up the size. I think this width should be something like 850. And then we need to change its blend mode to subtract and invert it. And then we'll also feather it by 400 pixels. So now it's only picking up one area of the sky. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to apply a randomize to its position. So um, first of all, I'm just going to set that position to zero. And then let's randomize the X position. So add parameter behavior randomize. Let's have an amount of 1920 and set the apply mode to add and subtract. So it shoots backwards and forwards across the screen. And let's reduce that frequency down to two. So now let's have a look how that's playing. So you can see it's flashing around all over the sky, and that's, that's quite a lot better. There's one other thing I'd like to do, and that's to add some animation to these clouds so they look like they're sort of swirling in the background. So what I'm going to do is select a group, let's call that sky, and I'm going to come to filters, distortion, and I'm going to add twirl. And that's way too much. So what I'm going to do is reduce the amount down to 0.4 and then I'm going to reduce the twirl itself to zero and I'm going to add a ramp behavior to it. I'll have a start value of six degrees and an end value of negative six degrees and then if we play that you can see we've got this this movement in the in the clouds and I think that's that's helping but I just want to move it off a little bit to the left hand side and up so let's turn on the overlays so we can see its control. And then I'm just going to push it up like this so it's not intersecting our mountains in the background there, just this area of clouds here. So let's now turn everything back on again and play it and see what happens. So I want you to take notice of the fact that we are currently running something like 40 layers of 1920 by 1920 ProRes 444, and it's playing back at full frame rate, despite the fact that I'm actually doing a screen recording. And for me, that's one of the most amazing things about motion. You know, there's no way you could possibly do anything like this in After Effects and have real-time playback even of a couple of layers. So really impressive, I think. So that's it for this part, I think. We'll probably need another part in which we look at the final animation and doing some extra cosmetic tweaks. So I hope you can join me for that one, and thanks very much indeed for watching. Stay safe.